Hello everyone, Cat Weasel here, welcome to the channel and welcome back to Arkham Horror, the living card game and Night of the Zealot where we're on scenario two, the Midnight Masks and this is episode 13 I think and we're soon going to go into turn 22 but not yet because first things first first of all been a bit of a delay i have had a shocking cough so i wasn't able for the last couple of days to actually do any recording i couldn't i couldn't get through three or four sentences without some horrendous hacking cough even now i've got a bottle of water with me just in case it starts up again so that is why there's been a slight delay because there is a lot of talking to be done because I made a right Horlicks of the last episode and just before I get into that though um, just quick reiteration of something I said at the beginning of the game I don't I haven't actually played a living card game before I haven't played a collectible card game before so things like Android Netrunner Lord of the Rings, the living card game, uh, Call of Cthulhu, the card game, and, you know, Magic the Gathering, all that sort of stuff I have never played. So a lot of concepts and mechanisms which are like second nature to you guys that are watching aren't to me, I'm afraid. Hence, I've been making a few errors, but it's all part of the learning process, but just first card game I have ever played properly living card game so I do apologize for the errors but I do ask that you that you do bear that in mind that um, that's the reason why perhaps there are a few more errors than perhaps you used to seeing um, that said there were a couple of errors I made that like were just basic but let's go through the errors as they occurred the first one was vicious blow if you recall we had Roland and he was fighting the masked hunter and he passed and I played this sort of after I passed the test now I was going to play it but what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to commit it you know before you actually draw out of the bag what caught me out was when I was like sort of getting all my ducks in a row and I was thinking right how am I going to play this um, I had a look at the cards I was going to play and this was one of them and I just read if this skill test is successful during an attack the attack deals plus one damage and I just thought oh right I've got to play it after it's successful if you actually look at the footage though you see that I, I automatically sort of put it in and go oh and we're going to play this as well because I want the plus one damage the reason I did it like that is because I knew damn well it was there and I was going to do it. It's just a timing error. Misread the card. As I say, I'm not used to the, you know, the mechanisms and what seems second nature to a lot of you out there who've played a lot of these games isn't to me. And I just got it mixed up. So it was a, just a genuine oversight. And I'm going to let that stand because, as I say, I was going to play it. And I know in my mind I was going to play it. So I'm perfectly fine with saying, yep. Yeah, Played it at the wrong time, but I'm going to keep it because I knew it was there. It wasn't like me just being forgetful. Knew it was there and knew I was going to play it. So if it would have been the case, I mean, you've seen it before, even in this playthrough where I've gone, oh, forgot to play it. And, you know, I hold my hands up and won't play it. I'll just say, don't, my fault. But on this one, I was actually going to commit and play it. But I just got a bit confuzzled. That's why I played it after I should have done. I should have played it before I picked the Chaos token out. So we're going to keep that. And we did end up killing the Masked Hunter. So that's the first one. The second thing was two against myself with manual dexterity and overpower. On both of these, one for Wendy and this one for Roland, we actually passed the skill test that we committed them for. What we should have done on both of these was draw another card. I forgot. So we passed the test and we were successful, but I didn't draw a card. Again, that's just me being forgetful. I'm not going to draw cards again. But that was where, you know, made a mistake and it was totally against me. So I've done myself out of a couple of cards there that I should have had. So put that there and that there. 
Barley's are like small potatoes <laughs> compared to the next two errors. The first one was to do with Peter Warren. If you recall, he was here. And what happened was I had Wendy. She got a free move to East Town. Then she moved into Rivertown. And once she was in Rivertown, she engaged the Masked Hunter. Then she evaded the Masked Hunter. Then she moved to Miskatonic University. And then she spent two of her clues to get Peter Warren on our side. Which is all well and good. Except that's actually five actions, not four. The evade and the engage are sort of... I, I, I coalesce them together as a single action. It is, obviously, two. So when she got to Miskatonic University, she couldn't actually spend two clues. She'd run out of actions. Which means, during the enemy phase, Peter Warren would have still been an enemy. He would have got a free attack during that enemy phase, and he would have inflicted one damage. Here's the damage. It's not going to go on to Wendy, though. We have Leo DeLuca, so it goes on to Leo DeLuca. Then what would have happened, the next turn, for her first action, she would have spent the two clues. So, eventually, Peter would have joined our team. So, we'll put him on there. And that means we went up to seven victory points. All well and good. That would mean she had three actions left. Now, originally, last turn, when I was doing it incorrectly, I thought I, when I thought I had a brand new turn of four actions, I played Will to Survive. Now, I thought that this was automatic uh, pass, yeah? Because you didn't have to take any chaos token so i thought all oh, right it's just an automatic pass let's pick up all four clues well it isn't what it is and it's not well explained um you, you really have to go digging into the rules reference to find it is rather than pull a chaos token out it's just assumed that you have a zero chaos token for each skill test so we have a shroud of four but we only had an intellect of three, and that's minus one. So getting a zero wouldn't have been good enough. So I couldn't have just picked all those clues up. I would have had to commit another card. So played that wrong. First of all, I couldn't pick up four clues anyway, because I didn't have four actions left. I had to spend an action to get Peter Warren. I couldn't pick up three clues without committing cards. And there's only two cards that I could have committed, both wild card icons, opportunist and cunning distraction. So thanks to a couple of people who pointed that out. Um, I will point out that really the card should be better. I mean, you've got a load of space there. I'd have put something like, until the end of your turn, do not reveal chaos tokens for any skill tests you perform. It is automatically assumed that any skill test has a chaos token of zero. Just one extra line. And with that, with that, I'd have known. I thought, oh right, zero. Well, a zero is not good enough because I need a minus one. And then we'd have gone from there. But as it is, I missed it. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to do what I was going to do before I had my brainwave and incorrectly did what I did. I was going to resign. Now, George, he did point out about the opportunist and cunning distraction, which would get us two of those clues. Play this, and we'd get those for two of our clues because we'd then get the minus one. That'd be enough to generate another cultist. But to be honest, thinking about it, again, I wouldn't have thought of that at the time. I'd have just thought, oh right, first thing I would have thought was, well I can't get all four clues, so I'm not going to get the victory point. And then I, I don't think I'd have noticed cunning distraction and opportunist could be used in conjunction with this. So what I'd have probably done is gone, you know what, we've got our four cultists, I said I wanted four at the beginning, I'll resign. So that's what we're going to do. 
and it serves myself right really for making all those cock ups but um, I don't think it'd be right to carry on do something that I don't think that I'd have worked out myself anyway and then go for that fifth cultist so what we'll do turn 21 we resigned as soon as with uh, I think Roland's last action we would have resigned so he'd have still gone up there they still killed the acolyte but with with his last action what he would have done instead is resign and we would have come out of the game okay so gone through that <laughs> having resigned then we've got to read some stuff so let's get the campaign guide and we'll flick through it we want part two so do not read till the end of the scenario no resolution was reached each investigator resigned or was defeated read resolution one so wendy would have resigned used one of her actions to resign and roland would have used one of his actions to resign you've managed to obtain some useful information about the cult and its plans you can only hope that it is enough in your campaign log, under cultists we interrogated, record the names of each unique cultist enemy in the victory display. So the people we've got in there are Peter Warren, Victoria Devereaux, um, Wolfman Drew and the Masked Hunter. In your campaign log, under cultists who got away, record the name of each unique enemy still remaining in the cultist deck or in play. If it is Agenda 1, record the Mask Hunter here as well. Well, we've got the Mask Hunter, so that's fine. The ones who got away were the Grave Digger and the Mortician. So, doubtless we will see them in the next scenario. If the Ghoul Police... If the ghoul priest is in the victory display, cross out the ghoul priest is still alive in your campaign log. Well, we killed him yonks back, so that's fine. Each investigator earns experience equal to the victory X value of each card in the victory display. And that is seven. We got two for the mass hunter, one each for Peter Warren, Victoria Devereaux and Wolfman Drew. And we got a victory point for downtown and we got a victory point for the graveyard so that is seven remember that Roland already had an experience point from last turn that he didn't spend so he's got eight and Wendy Adams has got seven so before we go into the devourer below what we'll do is we'll generate some new cards so for Roland he is going to get rid of hyper awareness it isn't very good for him and he's also going to get rid of one of his flashlights so those are the two cards that he's discarding the two cards that he's taking with his eight experience is the shotgun this is excellent this costs five but costs four experience well, it's five resources to play. It's got two combat icons. It's item, weapon, firearm. Uses two ammo. As an action, you can spend one ammo to fight. You get plus three combat for the attack, which is brilliant. Instead of its standard damage, this attack deals one damage for each point you succeed by to a minimum of one or a maximum of five. If you fail and will damage another investigator, this attack deals one damage for each point that you fail by. Again, minimum of one or a maximum of five. This is immense. So we have now got the shotgun. That will go into his deck. And for his final, uh, for a final couple of points, which is six, we're going to take police badge. So we get plus one on his willpower and as a free sort of action while the investigator at your location is taking his or her turn discard police badge that investigator may take two additional actions this turn it's got a willpower icon and a wildcard icon so that's pretty cool and it's another amulet so we can't have this at the same time well we can't have it in play at the same time as the elder sign amulet for example so there we go, we have spent six experience. I don't think we're gonna spend any more. So we've still got two left. So there we go. 
And for Wendy, what's she going to spend her six experience on? Well, first of all, she's going to get rid of the Derringer. It's not much cop for her. She doesn't, as you've seen, she doesn't really use weapons that much. So we'll get rid of that. And we're going to get rid of Stray Cat as well. Now, Stray Cat's pretty good, but it's an ally. And one of the cards that we're going to get is an ally as well. And if we kept Stray Cat, we'd have ally and Stray Cat, ally and Leo De Luca, and an ally that we're going to take on board now. So how much do we need the Stray Cat? We're just uh, allied up. So let's get rid of Stray Cat and the Derringer. The cards that we're going to take... We're going to spend four on Hot Streak. So this allows us to gain 10 resources. And it's got a wild card icon. So let's take this. Yeah, I win again. Sorry, Sugar. It's just not your night. Woo! And the ally I talked about, that's the Cat Burglar. So willpower icon, agility icon. It's an asset. Ally criminal. You get plus one agility. As a... Action, you can exhaust Cat Burglar, exhaust, so that's good, to disengage from each enemy engaged with you and move to a connecting location. The, this action does not provoke attacks of opportunity, so this is a really good card. Plus, you get the two health and the two sanity buffer, so brilliant. She's going to take that and that is going to go into her hand. So, just a quick recap of what we've done. We've ended up resigning because I made a few boo-boos last turn and I don't think I would have been able to suss out <laughs> using opportunist and cunning distraction to get those two clues that we needed. As I say, I think I'd have probably missed that in all honesty. So what we'll do is we will resign. We did get four of our allies, uh, four of our elite cultists. And what we've done We've resigned, we've took the experience points and we've spent them and we will now move into the third part, the third scenario, which is the Devourer below. So, hope everybody's on board with that and understands what we've done and what we've done to rectify those little mistakes I did, about four or five of them. <laughs> Before we get on to the Devourer below, just something else to do with Arkham Horror. Uh, has come in the mail i um i actually went on the ffg website and ordered the investigators of arkham horror which is like a, a book and also we got marie lambeau as a character for the actual card game anyway that arrived but moments ago and i just thought i'd show you what it came with you actually get a play mat with it here's the play mat a lot smaller than the one i've just um designed as you can see this is much smaller and it's got a, a nice colorful design on it uh, not the design i'd have picked mind you if i didn't hold it upside down that'd help yes put it the right way that's arkham horror right way up so but it's nice and colorful so that came with it very nice as i mentioned marie lambeau she comes with it as well she's like a promo so there she is, there's a character card, and black and white on the other side, as you can see. And here is her actual player card. So Marie Lambeau, the entertainer, as you can see, she's a mystic. And she's got four willpower, four intellect, only one combat, and three agility. She's a performer and sorcerer. While you have one or more Doom among cards that you control, you may take an additional action during your turn, which can only be used to play spell cards or activate spell action abilities. Her Elder Sign token, she gets plus one, and you may add one Doom to or remove one Doom from a card that you control. So if you actually pull that token, you can do that with the Doom. She's got six health and eight sanity. On the other side, here we are, she's got a deck size of 30. Deck building options, spell cards level 0 to 5, mystic cards level 0 to 3, neutral cards level 0 to 5, occult cards level 0 up to 5 other level 0 seeker and or survivor cards. Very good. Deck building requirements, do not count towards deck size. 
Mystifying Song, Baron Samaday, and One Random Basic Weakness. Marie Lambeau always had a voice to die for. People called her the Smoky Velvet. They said she was born to sing jazz and that she had the magic touch. And maybe they were right. After all, the songs she heard in her dreams ever since her grandmare passed away were like nothing she'd ever heard before. The vocals sounded like no language spoken on earth and the notes twisted and warped. Why her grandmare had moved from New Orleans to Arkham, Marie would never know. People used to call her grandmare a witch. Now maybe there's more than just jazz in Marie's blood after all. <laughs> so what I was thinking about Marie, she'd be excellent on Curse of the Rougarou. So I think when we do Curse of the Rougarou, we will have Marie Lambeau saddle up and why not? She's going back home to visit. Her cards? Well, she's got an event that costs three. Mystifying Song, two wild card icons, very nice. Spell Song. Marie Lambeau deck only. Fast. Play when the agenda would advance by reaching its doom threshold. Until the end of the phase, the, the agenda cannot advance by reaching its doom threshold and remove mystifying song from the game so you can stop the agenda flicking for a turn with this by the look of it so pretty cool baron sam day doesn't cost anything it's an asset lord of the cemetery it's a weakness avatar revelation put baron sam day into play he cannot leave play while he has less than three doom on him forced when any amount of damage is placed on an investigator in Baron Samaday's location, place one additional damage on that investigator. <sighs> free action. Exhaust Baron Samaday. Place one Doom on Baron Samaday. If he has three or, more doom, three or more Doom on him, discard him. So, this is pretty nasty. So, remember, any Doom that's on him will also count towards any agenda that we've got. So, if you get some something like this, you know, when you're near the end of an agenda... By trying to get rid of him, you're going to flip the agenda, so nasty. Baron Samaday, not very nice. So that is Marie Lambeau, so very pleased with her. Coming through the mail, but let's have a quick look at the book. I'm going to enjoy reading this. It's excellent. Just look at that. This is what I'd have preferred on the mouse mat. I'd have preferred the uh, play mat to have this on. I think that's I think that's a better illustration, but as you can see, fantastic quality. So you've got every single investigator in the Arkham files. It includes the new ones that came with Mansions of Madness. So um, Agatha Crane, she's in here, and so are um, is it Carson Sinclair and Doctor Matteo? Although not Doctor Matteo, Father Matteo, they're all included. Plus, you know, some of our old favourites like Agnes Baker. So, and they've all got a little story each. So I'm going to look for, there was Agnes, there was Agatha Crane, sorry. So you do have the new ones in as well. Doesn't look to be any more, because I had a quick flick through to see if there were any more new ones that we could expect to be coming down the line. But it appears that these Mansions of Madness extra ones like Agatha Crane, they appear to be the final the final ones, I, I don't think we'll be getting any more. If we do, this will be out of date straight away. <laughs> but as you can see, brilliant artwork and lovely write-ups. So there he is, Silas Marsh, mum and dad. <laughs> Going a bit fishy, so poor old Silas. So, get yeah, all this sort of stuff in here, and it's going to be... Uh, I'm really looking forward to reading this. So, fabulous. Oh, look, it's Yig. So, there we go. Looks absolutely fantastic. How many pages have we got? Must be well over 100. 264 pages. So, brilliant. Chock full of brilliant artwork and stories. Mark Harrigan, the soldier. So really nice and that's not it there is still more to come got some lovely prints lovely art prints really glad we got i got this one so this is on really good card as well really good art paper 
look how thick it is so you can tell by that so these will look lovely mounted so there we go that's that which is the cover of the book and anybody who's got the actual card game will recognize that from the box it's Arkham so Arkham by Moonlight so another fantastic piece of artwork The next big box that's coming out for the card game is obviously the Dunwich Legacy. So here we have the artwork of the Dunwich Legacy with the Dunwich Horror chasing some poor unfortunate down towards the stream there. So again, another stunning piece of artwork. And the last piece of artwork was a very nice surprise. Anybody who's actually watched my channel will know that my favourite investigator, because she's lovely, is Daisy Walker and guess who we got we got the lovely Daisy the librarian so really pleased to get that print don't think my missus will be pleased but I'm pleased so she will be getting framed as well so as you can see fantastic artwork so really pleased that I got Daisy I don't know if uh, Daisy comes out with everybody or it was just the look of the drawer and I happened to get Daisy but very pleased that I did right so quickly gone through that quickly gone through the mistakes of last turn and next turn what I'll well I'll do it this turn actually I'll get all this cleared away and um, I will set up for the devourer below so I'll see you in a few minutes after I've sorted everything out after a frantic nighttime search throughout Arkham you have tracked down and questioned several members of the cult. Your findings are disturbing. They claim to worship a being known as Umordoth, a monstrous entity from another realm. You are able to confirm much of Lita's story. The cult is agitated over the destruction of a ghoul lair. However, a surprising detail also turns up. The one who invaded the lair and set off this night's events was none other than Lita Chantler herself. You are not sure why this important detail was omitted from Lita's story. Did she tell you only as much as was necessary to draw you into her conflict? But in another light, she seems to be fighting to protect the city of Arkham from a terrible menace. The final piece of the puzzle was found written in a journal possessed by one of the cultists. It describes a dark ritual to be performed deep within the woods south of Arkham this very night. According to the journal, the ritual's completion will open a gate and bring forth the cult's dark master into this world. If the cult is not stopped, Lita warns, there is a possibility that Umordoth's vengeance will consume all in its path. Frightened but determined to stop the ritual, you head into the woods. So here we are, scenario three, the devourer below. What do we need to do? Well, first of all, we had to gather some encounter cards and these are the symbols that the encounter cards had so I've gathered all those and I've put them in that deck after that we've got to put the main path location into play which I have done and then we have to shuffle the six copies of Arkham Woods choosing four of them at random put them into play without looking at their revealed sides remove the other two from the game and then each investigator begins play at the main path. So there's the main path. And these are the six Arkham Woods cards. All on the unrevealed side. So we'll give these a bit of a shuffle. There we go. Do that. So we want four. So that's one, two, three four these two can go over here so we've put those out and we've also put our two investigators here on the main path very good now we've got to set the ritual site and umard off to one side so they're just here at the side there then we randomly choose one of the four encounter sets the Agents of Yogg-Sothoth, the Agents of shub -Nigarath, the Agents of Cthulhu, or the Agents of Haster. And these are all here. 
So what I've done is, I can't even remember which ones are which now, but there's a pile of each one of those and we're going to choose them randomly. So we'll use a die, use D6 and these two will be 1 to 3 and those two will be 4 to 6. So it's 1 to 2, so we'll get rid of these guys. And 1 to 3, 4 to 6. And that's a 2, so we get rid of those. So whatever these are, they will get shuffled into the encounter deck, I believe. Do shuffle them in, don't I? Without looking at the chosen encounter set, shuffle it and the remainder of the encounter cards together to form an encounter deck. And we remove the others from the game. There we go. Cut. So that is our encounter deck. Set these out. These will probably get moved around during the game because they will have various connections to each one. So what I'll do is, as they're revealed and we find out what the connections are, I'll probably move them around so it's just easier to use the connecting bits of white cardboard to see where people can travel to and from. But for the time being, we'll just leave it like that. What else do we have to do? Got to check the number of names recorded under cultists who got away. Well, they're both up there. It's uh, Herman and Ruth, so that is two. If there are one or two names, we place one Doom on Agenda 1A. There's the Doom up there, and the clock is at one o'clock. We've got to add a Chaos token to the bag, and it's this Elder Think token here. So instead of 16, we now have 17. We're still on the easy and standard. Talking of the Chaos Tokens, let's just have a quick look at the Devourer below. Easy standard. So the Skulls are minus X. X is the number of monster enemies in play. So could be quite large if we don't kill them off. The Cultist, minus 2. Place 1 Doom on the nearest enemy. The Broken Tablet is minus 3. If there is a monster enemy at your location, take a damage. And the elder thing is minus five, so nasty token. If there is an ancient one enemy in play, reveal another token. So that's pretty bad. If the ancient one enemy is in play, who moored off, well, we may as well call it a day anyway, because it's game over, dude. So that is the devourer below. And what the tokens mean. Let's pop that there, where we can see it. Very good. And we may as well read the agenda. We've got three agendas. And the first one is Agenda 1A, the Arkham Woods. From interrogating members of the conspiracy within Arkham, you have learned that they are performing a rite of vengeance in response to the destruction of one of their master's lairs. You have entered the woods outside Arkham to try and stop them. The woods seem unnaturally cold and filled with a deathly silence. Ooh. And we have got a doom of four. And we already have one, remember? Because two cultists got away. Right, so there we go. Let's have a read of the act card. Again, there are three of these. Act 1A investigating the trail that looks nice there doesn't it load of dead bodies hanging off a tree very nice investigating the trail the evidence you've gathered has led you to the woods south of arkham where you believe a ritual to summon a being named umordoth is about to take place stealing your resolve you set forth deeper into the woods hoping to find the site of this ritual 
we've got to put three clues per investigator on this so that is six clues pop that up there right oh so that is the setup we've got our investigators here they're gonna have to reveal the main path we'll do that start of next turn and then we will travel to various woods locations the idea is obviously we're looking for this ritual site that's over here so we'll have to do something whereby the ritual site will get um, revealed well not so much revealed we'll be able to put it onto the board and then we'll be able to go and reveal it it's probably got to pass one of the act cards I would have thought so out of those three act cards once we turn one over it'll say you have found the ritual site and the agendas and the various monsters and whatnot will be trying to stop us I think so is there anything else in the setup check the campaign log if it is past midnight each player discards two random cards from his or her starting hand or if you remember we actually finished at nine o'clock so we weren't at midnight that was fine check the campaign log if the ghoul priest is still alive shuffle it into the encounter deck he isn't still alive so he is not in the encounter deck let's put the encounter deck up here there we go that's now ready to go and all we've got to do is pick our starting hands so we will start with good old Roland have a good shuffle and I think Roland will need a weapon so we may have to mulligan quite aggressively in order to get ourselves a weapon if we don't draw one in the first five cards so here we go our first card is magnifying glass not brilliant so that's our first card may get rid of that next we've got guts our third card is stubborn detective but that is a weakness so we get rid of that then we have guard dog then we have unexpected courage this is not a good hand and then we have evidence I'm gonna chuck every single one of those back and let's pull another five beat cop so we've got to keep these so we have got beat cop we have got emergency cash we've got a machete so at least we've got a weapon another emergency cash and finally perception so not brilliant but not too bad so all these i've got to be shuffled back in and let's have a cut there we go there's his deck and we'll set these up down here So not an amazing start and we've got two emergency caches that we don't probably really need but at least we have machete one other good thing about this particular scenario is we don't have um, what is it crypt chill so we should be able to get the machete and the beat cop get that promoted pretty quickly right so that was Roland let's do exactly the same for Wendy goes without saying we could do with Leo Leo first let's get Leo early in this particular scenario if we can and then we can always swap out with Cat Burglar later on so again gonna mulligan quite aggressively to see if we cannot get Leo right so our first card is 
emergency cash we may chuck that back scavenging not very good dig deep not, not doing well here are we leather coat <laughs> Leo De Luca so we'll keep Leo he's definitely staying and I think we will get rid of all the others yeah we'll get rid of the others nothing too amazing in that lot so we get elusive baseball bat good cutting distraction another good one and finally flashlight yes she's pretty much our clue grabber so that's pretty good so we'll take these that we discarded that we mulliganed out those there right so I'll put these Arkham Woods one over here the Arkham Woods that we didn't use so there we are we are all set up for the final scenario of Knight of the Zealot and that is it for this episode and I hope that you will join me next time thanks so much for watching sorry there wasn't any gameplay but um We'll get round to that soon enough. I'm now off work for the holidays, so I will be cracking along with this, hopefully. Um, it felt a lot like Christmas today, talking about the holidays, because not only did that Arkham Horror book arrive, something else arrived as well. So I'll just show you what my next playthrough is going to be, seeing as it arrived today. It's a Kickstarter that I backed last year. It's an extremely heavy box. And it is Perdition's Mouth, Abyssal Rift. So, weighs an absolute ton. Look at the size of it. So, hopefully, I'll be able to start that as soon as I have finished Night of the Zealot. So, looking forward to that. Haven't played it before. It's brand new. So, be prepared for errors. Because <laughs> it will be a blind playthrough. But I'm really looking forward to cracking along with that. Looks an excellent game. And the components look top-notch too. So, thank you all for watching. Thanks for all the views. Thanks for all the subscriptions. Thanks for all the likes. I'd like to thank everybody for all the strategy and tips. Especially pointing out those errors. As I said, there were quite a few last time. So... Congratulations to George and Iggy and uh, Writer Guy and everybody else who pointed out where I went wrong. Thank you very much for that. Again, if you noticed any er errors in the setup, <laughs> please let me know. Um, but I think I set it up right, but you never know. So, um, yes, thank you so much for watching. Thanks to everybody who has gone across to Board Game Links to upvote the site, and to everybody who has gone across to BGG to like the geek lists or like the threads with the videos in. Again, that is much appreciated as well. Thank you very much. So I hope that you will join me next time for what will be episode 14 of Arkham Horror, the living card game, Night of the Zealot, where we will start scenario three, the devourer below. But until then, this is me, Cat Weasel, signing off. Toodaloo.